Hello, welcome to this video tutorial on the BGP attribute of weight. And I've got a very simple topology here set up with four routers. And uh, this video actually goes hand in hand with a blog post I did on my blog, which is rogerperkin.co.uk forward slash CCIE. There'll be a direct link to this specific BGP weight uh, blog post in the description, so you can go there and follow along or we'll just go straight through it here and you can see uh, I've got four routers uh, they're both they're all of them sorry in a separate EBG so we've got autonomous system 1, 4, 5 and 6 each router has got a loopback address of 1111, and 6666 and they're all EBGP neighbours so what I'm going to do is show the routing currently from the perspective of router one and to see which way it will be going down to router six and then we're going to try and influence that decision using the weight so if we uh, bring up the console now here we are on router one now if I just do a show IP BGP we can see now from router one's perspective its route towards six it's got two options uh, one of them is via router five and one of them is via router four and it's actually chosen the one via router four here as depicted by the little arrow to the left. Now we'll go through why it's made that decision in a minute, but as you can see, the weight, the default weight of any other route learned from an extra neighbor is zero. So all these other routes here have a weight of zero. The only exception to that is a locally originated route, as we can see for the 1111, which is locally originated on router one and also the two links out of that router these two and they will have weights of 32768 now as to the reason why router one is going via router four here and we can verify that by just a show IP route 6.6.6.6 and it'll say via router 4 and if we trace to it you'll see that it takes that path and gets there so why is it choosing that route well to define that we need to go through the BGP decision process okay so we've jumped on to that specific blog post now and we're going to go through the steps uh, the BGP decides on the route. So as we see here, first one, prefer the path with the highest weight. Uh, so for those two routes, both weights are equal, they're both zero. So we're going to move to the next step. Prefer the path with the highest local preference. Local preference is the same, so let's move on. Prefer that was a path that was locally originated, same for both. Prefer the path with the lowest AS path. Both routers have an AS path of two. Uh, prefer the path with the lowest origin type. They both got the same. Prefer the path with the lowest med. We're going to skip that because they're both the same. Prefer EBGP over IBGP. Both routes are EBG. We'll skip that. Prefer the path with the lowest IGP metric to the next BGP hop. It's the same for both. Check if multipath is enabled. We'll skip that. We'll get into number 10. And when both paths are external, prefer the oldest one. So this is the tiebreaker, and this is the reason that currently router 1 decides to go this way and down to here, simply because it is the oldest route. So that just means that it was installed first before router 6's option. So to prove that, we're just going to bounce the neighbor to on router 4. So this was the oldest route. So if we bounce this neighbor, 
that takes router 4 down, brings it back up again. So now the route coming in via router 4 is going to be a new route. So the oldest route will be via router 6. That's the theory. Now, as you can see, the router 4 route has dropped out and there is only one path currently going via router 5 for 6666. If we just wait until the BGP comes back, when it does come back, you'll see that the route via 15 now becomes the best path, and the route via 14 is no longer the best path, because this one was the oldest route. Okay, that's a bit of a diversion for now. So what we want to do is actually ensure that we route one way every single time, and we're going to do that via the BGP wait attribute. So we want all the traffic from router 1 to go via router 4 every single time, no matter what. And we're going to do that by influencing the wait. Now there are two ways to influence the wait within BGP. One is via a direct neighbor statement, and two is with a route map on a specific prefix. So let's go through option one first, and that is directly on a neighbor statement. Now, to do that, we go into the BGP process and directly under the neighbor statement, so neighbor 10.0.14.4, we just say wait, and we're going to set it to 100. So what this is saying is that for all routes that I receive from router 4, set the weight to be 100. Now, the weight attribute, you set it inbound to affect your outbound traffic. So for BGP weight, you set it inbound to affect your outbound traffic. Now, if we look at this now, nothing will have changed. We are still going via router 5, and both of these weights are zero. So we need to clear this. Now, we can do a soft reset, so clear IP, P, G, P, star, soft, inbound. All that does is a root refresh, keeps the neighbor up. So now we look straight away, we see what's changed. And that is for the 666 prefix. It's now going via router 4, and the reason is its weight is 100. But you can see also that every other route that's been learned via router 4 has also got a weight of 100. And that's because setting the weight attribute affects every prefix received in from router 4. Now the other option I said about doing this was via a route map. So let's just remove this off here now. So we're going to take the neighbor statement off Oh, I think this is just something in GNS that's uh, nothing major. Okay. Router BGP 1. We're going to take off this wait statement here. So we just want to do this only for the 6.6.6.6 .6 .6 prefix. So to do that, we have to match the address with an access list. So we're going to say access list 1, permit 6.6.6.6. .6 it's a wildcard mask, so we just do that. Whoops. Okay, so that access list is only going to match the 6.6.6.6 slash 32 prefix. We now need to define a route map. So the route map is going to be called set weight
and we're going to say match the IP address with the access list of one and set the weight to be a hundred. Okay, so that's going to match only this prefix and set its weight to 100. But on a route map, we need to ensure that what we do after that, this will be a deny on everything else. So what we actually need to do is permit everything else to go through without doing anything else. So route map set weight permit 20. Okay. So now I've got the route map. So permit 10, it matches our access list one and sets the weight to 100 and permits everything else through without doing anything. Now this is set on the router BGP under the neighbor statement. So we go neighbor again, 10 zero. So this is router four. We're gonna put a route map set weight and it's inbound again we'll clear the IP BGP star soft in now what should happen now is if we look at show IP BGP that the only prefix in here that will have the weight set should be 6666 and we can see that all of the weights here have gone back to zero and the only one which we are preferring is the 6666 via router 4 and it's got a weight of zero. So that is the two ways to set weight on a prefix either on the neighbor statement or with a route map. And remember that weight is only locally significant. So currently on router 1 the weight as we can see is a hundred but if we jumped over to router four we can see that the weights are zero all the way through so six 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 on this router is zero so the weight attribute is only affected on the local router so if you wanted to use this you would have to set it efficiently across all the routers. Now the next way to do that, the better way is to use local preference, which will pass between routers within an autonomous system. And we'll cover that in the next video. So I hope this has been informative and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.